Nobody loves radiators, right? That's where these kind of get shit on, is they've, they've got the radiator up front. So, gonna do a little bit of experimenting here. I found this tube in a scrap bin. I'm gonna weld these cooling fins onto the side. I'm gonna weld on a radiator cap. I'm gonna make some hose fittings, and we're gonna make a radiator delete. This is gonna tuck in up underneath here, and we're gonna, instead of the hoses going forward to the radiator, they're gonna come backwards to this big heat sink and we're gonna see if it'll be enough to cool this motor. I've got a pressure slash temperature gauge. Probably gonna machine that into the side of one of these on that side, just so I can keep an eye on it. Uh, I looked at ones on McMaster to get like a really small one and they were like five times the price. So I have some solid aluminum that I'm going to make the mounting bungs out of and the hose fittings. And then I also have three quarter inch tube I'm gonna drill right through this thing and weld in a bunch of tubes just for airflow. Try to get as much airflow through this thing as possible. I hope it works, cause it'll look really cool. As much as I wanna start on this, I need to make the mounting points on the frame to uh, get an idea of where everything needs to go. So I'll start with that. I love my Milwaukee tools, but the chucks on these drills are just junk. No matter how hard you tighten this fucking thing, it just slips. And I had that issue with the cheap drill and I thought that it would be fixed when I bought the fuel. I got these things made, I welded them all the way around and then I just drilled a couple holes in this angle iron. I have these parallel to each other, and then I have them centered in the fender. They are out quite a ways. I want that tank to be floating in here. I want there to be a bunch of space around it because I figure that the more open air that's around it, the better job it'll do at cooling. I might have to put a heat shield on the inside of this exhaust, depending how much heat this thing dissipates. But So I'm going to stitch these on, and then we can start on the tank. I put a bunch of washers under here just to set this at the right height. I thought about just cutting the fittings off like the bottom of the radiator and off the little thermostat housing but if this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to go back to a radiator. So my friend Phil graciously donated this one inch stick of 6063 to me, and I'll copy these hose clamp fittings. I'm not gonna run a thermostat or fuck all, like it's a Honda Shadow. I figure if this thing's got juice running through the water pump, it's gonna run all right. This stuff is really gummy and it pushes a bad burr. I've been trying to take light, light passes, but even still, just does not want to break. All right, here's an experiment to see if I can part off aluminum at full RPM. You know what? Just in case, I'm gonna wear my face shield in case something hits me in the fucking head. I never have good luck with parting. I should change my belt speed, but I don't want to. Nice. That should hold a hose. Just gotta drill a hole through it. All 
right, well, these took forever. I've got two. I drilled a blind hole in these and then tapped them for M8. Those will be the mounting, mounting studs. This is the outlet. I ended up having to put a weld bead around this and then I just shaped it, drilled a 20 millimeter hole through that. These are the inlet ones. And then I made a quarter inch NPT for that temperature gauge. I eyeballed that stick and this is all that I was left with. So I did a pretty good job. I need to cut these down and then I can find the center of this and I'll, I'll mill a, a hole in here for that NPT plug. Oh, good save. I put that tube on here and where it lines up is in these top little holes. Rather than try to get in there and clean that coating or whatever that is out of there, I just put it in the mill. Yeah, so I'll fill weld those and then we'll mill those flat. I'm just scared that a drill will break these fins. That's what I'm going in with end mills. that looks like. So I'll weld this from the back side. That was welding like shit. I ended up having to go around it a bunch of times and oh it was not fun. I don't know if I've opened up a can of worms welding this stuff or not. Line it up somewhat with the middle and then I'll trace this and we'll cut that out. I'm gonna abandon this. This material I don't know what it is but i cannot get it to weld nice and i got too far when i traced my circle some of these got really thin and so i ground into here and i was trying gonna try to fill them in so i have a surface to weld to but i cannot i can't even get a lay a weld bead on like the flats in here so i think that trying to weld it onto the tube i'm gonna be driving myself insane so i'm gonna mill this down and i'll push this guy out i gotta get some i'll get some material half inch or something material and I'll mill in some uh, slots. This is just too much of a pain in the ass, man. Look at how much porosity is in that weld. Yucky. We can do better. All right, I ordered material. Uh, it's not gonna be ready till tomorrow morning, but it is half inch, so I know how wide this is gonna be. I can do everything but the end caps, which is fine. Just spent all that time making a mess. That's all I did. That's all I accomplished was making a big fucking mess. This thing's not exactly round, but I got it within 10, 15 thou, which will be square enough for the end. I drilled out those holes and then I have those bungs mounted to the same piece of angle iron that I mounted the, the brackets on the frame to. And then I cleaned it out on the inside and I'll just give it a tack. Actually attack. Attack! Oh yeah, way better. I forgot that I knew what I was doing. I originally was gonna put this over here so that I could have access to it, because the seat, right? But it's kind of tight in there. I think I'm just going to lay it dead center up top. Maybe not dead center. Maybe I'll favor this way a little bit. And then I can route that overflow. I'm gonna put that overflow down here. I think I'm gonna put the outlet on this side, and then I'll put the inlets on this side, and that'll allow the coolant to flow from one end to the other, right? You don't just want it to go dump straight in and out you'd like want it to stay in there as long as possible now that now that this is up here I can kind of figure out where all of my fittings need to go this isn't really necessary but if it's worth doing it's worth overdoing 
When I drilled those bung holes, I already got the bed centered to the tube with these, these threaded sections. I know it's not too accurate, but now I know that when I put the center mark to the top, I'll be in the center axis of this tube. I stuck this outlet as far over this way as I could, but that chain goes right here, so I could only go so far this way. I wanted to make sure that there was enough clearance that this could just drop straight down. Can't get that drill bit up in there, so I'm just gonna try this. This is way too fast, by the way. Hell yeah, that worked pretty good. That's just slightly smaller than that bung. I just wanna prove to you guys how janky of a machinist I am. I have the carriage pushed into this steel, so this plate is sticking up, so I have something to put this tube against to square it to the bed, and then I put my angle finder on it, and I leveled that out with the carriage, and so I spun this to the top, and then I bolted it down. Now I can use my ruler to get this thing positioned in the center, right about there-ish. But the whole reason I wanted to do it like this is to get it off the bed so that I could get a, once I drill these out, I can get a drill up in here and I can put a pilot hole through the other side and then that'll give me a reference to drill those out to three quarters. I went to KMS today and got some A9 aluminum cutting fluid and I used it to drill that big hole on this side for the radiator cap and it seems to work very well. It was only $3.47 so I figured it was worth, worth it to try. I'm gonna have to change the tool out every time so that I'm in line with the hole. I cut the end of my three quarter inch step bit off because I had to drill a big hole in a tube and it was hitting the other side so I cut it so it's annoying because to use this thing I have to use a different drill to get it started. Oh fuck. I gotta get a long drill bit. I went up in size until I found one that will reach the other side. Just pokes through. I'm able to sneak a little drill bit in there, just at least then I can stick this in here, and that'll hold me in line with the mill, and then I'll sneak this clamp over. This guy's all drilled out, all the three quarter inch holes, the inlet holes, the cap hole, and the outlet hole. Now I've just gotta work on the end caps. I bought this piece of half inch aluminum plate this morning. It was six inch flat bar. I cut it down roughly to the length I need and to the width I need. I'm just gonna put a square edge on this so I can hold it in the mill better. This mill is trash, so it's very light cuts. I'm doing quarter inch slots just because the quarter inch end mill was the cheapest one at KMS. And uh, I'm gonna do eighth inch thins. I don't know, I just picked a number. You know what I'm gonna try? Let's engage some power feed here. Okay, well I'm gonna hang out here for the next 10 to 15 hours. I don't have enough travel on my lathe bed here. So loosen this guy off, and then I'll just drop this thing into the slot I made. And then I can just use the indicator like I have been. For some reason, I did the math for a 3 8 cutter, and this is a quarter inch cutter. So now it's quarter inch uh, fins, which is whatever. It saves me a bunch of time because I have like third as many things to cut, but I fucked up the first one and I cut just enough of this material to make two out of, so I couldn't save it. I should have just left that piece long. I've got this down to one pass. No matter how how much I tighten these gibs, there's a bunch of slop in this. So if I let this go, well, I have to hold it up. There's that part that only took forever. Garbage bins are here, and I forgot to put my fucking garbage out. Too busy building a Honda Shadow. This stuff welds way better. I got a pass on that. I kept this long, so now I can hold this in the lathe. I cut five of these three quarter inch tubes. For some reason, my step drill cut undersized, so none of these fit. I'm gonna have to just hand file these, or maybe I can go in there with my die grinder. All right, well, just do that nine more times. All those things fit. I'm just gonna tack 
this guy on. I just kind of wanted to do it in here just to line everything up. I just tacked them flush at the back. These are all long, obviously. I can, uh, I'll do a pass on here and then I'll sand these down and do whatever I gotta do. Kind of dinked that one, but we'll fix it. Just to help line these ones up, I have a little bit of stainless round bar. Little short guys, and then they'll just, and then I'll tack them and I can just push them through. Oh. Oh. Just caught it. And that's how you cheat, because you pulse it all the way around and then you get this mint looking fucking weld around that thing. Is it cheating to know how to use your machine? Now I'll do that 86 times. All the parts are welded. I have this nipple sticking out of the back of this plate. And so I'm just gonna super glue these two things together and then I'll be able to turn these down to a nice circle. Once I get these turned down, I can weld them to the end. It's kind of doing this. My plug must not be perfectly square, but this will be good enough to get it circle to weld on the end. Hit those with the heat gun and those broke apart. I put a little bevel on here on both of these sides and then I also put a bevel on the tube itself. I just pushed an angle iron up under here just to hold that. I didn't feel like going to the truck to get a clamp, so. And then I'm just lining the fins up with the exhaust. I'll cut this guy shorter and then tack this to the other side. It takes a lot of power to burn aluminum because you're flipping back and forth on polarity. That's everything my machine has to weld these fucking caps on the end. Quarter inch to half inch plate is a pretty substantial weld, so. That being said, you can do it. I dual carved my shovel heads, but once you get that fucking material hot enough, it'll let you wet a tunnel out. What was that? Broke attack. Yes, I did. Oh no, this doesn't fucking reach. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna push this back together? That's thinking quick on your feet, hey? I got the whole weight of this table pushing that back down. I got this thing put back in here. I just started this when it was on the, on the lathe. MPT fittings are tapered, so as you cut, you open up that hole, you'll allow whatever you're threading in to go in deeper. Thread that gauge in, Keep going back in with the tap until I get it at the perfect orientation to where it's tight and sitting straight up and down. First off, I'd like to thank my friend Kurt Bennett. He is a fourth floor chop shop on Instagram. Me and him talk on the phone all the time and we always just riff ideas and this was because of that. I went and got hoses for this thing and I filmed a bunch of footage of me like trying to, to get these to bend and I ended up going up buying hose benders and for copper tube and I was trying to heat these into position and, and this is the outlet hose. It's a great big one inch hose. I'm putting so much effort into trying to clean things up that I hate this. Can't stand this. So my plan is I'm going to cut these inlets off and the outlets. I'm going to cut those off. I'm going to buy some weld-on AN fittings. The sweet thing about AN is I'll be able to put weld-on fittings right into these outlets and then I can thread a 90 right onto here. So I'll put a 90 here, a 90 here. They'll thread right onto here. They're way smaller and they're nice braided line, right? I'll just do a dual feed out and then I'll make a 
an inlet block on that water pump. I'll just weld it on with some, some tapped holes for a couple of AN lines. And then I can come out here with a 90, go through here and then run it down and then go into the bottom with a 90. Like it just, it cleans everything up when you can thread those fittings on. If you want to see that, let me know. I was just planning on doing that off camera, but if there's enough interest, I'll film it. Yeah, so the total on this, I spent $17.82 on the temp gauge, and I spent $17.31 on the radiator cap. Those just came from Amazon. And then this plate was $25.32. So the grand total spent on the bike so far, on everything, is $1,276.25. The AN stuff is going to be probably a couple hundred bucks, which is, I think, considering I only have $1,200 into this bike... I can splurge a little bit on the AN stuff. But thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I like to read your guys' comments, so feel free to keep commenting down below. Yeah, I never know how to end these things.